Red Carpet Talk. We bring the red carpet to you. This is Don LaFontaine, and you're tuned into Red Carpet Talk. Hi, this is Don LaFontaine, and you can find out more info about me at www.donlafontaine.com. Well, I was a recording engineer uh, in New York City uh, back in the early 60s, and I got a job with uh, a young fellow named Floyd Peterson who came in to do some work at the National Recording Studios where I was working, and he was uh, producing radio spots for a movie called Dr. Strangelove, and I was assigned to work with him, and we hit it off. We found that we had sort of uh, like minds in the business, and uh, very shortly thereafter, I left the recording business and went to work for him as a writer, producer, editor, chief cook and bottle washer kind of a thing. We had a two-man business. Uh, that was in the, at that point, the infant movie advertising business. It hadn't really been uh, taken out of the studio system yet. And we grew very rapidly uh, over the next uh, couple of years. And uh, along the way, I just sort of fell into doing the voiceover stuff and did that casually for about 20 years until uh, I moved out to Los Angeles. Uh, and uh, then I started becoming a full-time job. You know, I think we're all victims of circumstance. I think that you know, it's a matter of being in the right place at the right time. I've been very lucky. I've uh -huh. had a career arc that is uh, that can never be duplicated because I was in a business that was uh, hadn't existed up until the time that, uh, that I was fortunate enough to get into it, and then I was lucky enough to be part of the people that, that wrote the original material. So I started my announcing career, my voiceover career, reading stuff that I had myself written. And uh, ever since then, I've been able to be... I've been reading variations on that same theme for the last 40-something years. So When I was a kid, before my voice changed, I was a pretty good boy soprano, but I'm married to a vocalist, and so I let her and my children <laughs> singing in the house. It's, uh, by comparison, I'm you know pretty much Froggy the Gremlin here. The voice of God thing, of course, is very uncomfortable. I, you know, I, I really think that God probably sounds more like Oprah than me. <laughs> in a world, of course, in a world where so plays, or at a time, in a place... Uh, Nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, no way out, uh, a one-man army, a uh, one-man killing machine, uh, you know, all those, the, uh, a roller coaster ride, you know, those kind of things, those, those things that you've heard a thousand times in trailers. You know, God gave me the voice, and, uh, and that's a product. My mother had a deep voice, and my father had a deep voice, and so I have one. And uh, um, other circumstances in my life led me to, to love words and to love to read, and then they just by chance I happened to be in the right place at the right time to fall into this business. Most of the stuff is chaos, and uh, and and uh, I really can't. I, I wish I could take credit for this, but I can't because I didn't plan it. It just happened the way it happened, and uh, mm -hmm. and I was the lucky recipient of it. I've worked on close to five thousand films, so it's it's um, it's pretty hard to pick a favorite out of it. Plus, I, along the way, I've sort of trained myself to pretty much forget what I've just done because uh, during the course of the day, I'm asked to drop myself into a number of different roles, and I don't like to have you know, what I've just finished carry over into what I'm about to do. So I've learned pretty much to do the job, sort of wipe it out of my, off, off the slate of my mind and, and go on to the next thing. Um, and I've done so many films, and so many very, very good films, I've been fortunate enough to be associated with them that, that it'd be very hard for me to pick out a favorite, or even a, a couple of favorites. Yeah, I think Peter Coyote is, is an excellent voice. Uh, he does a lot of work. I like his work. I like James Earl Jones, obviously. I, uh, in fact, uh, uh, we hired when I was way back in a long time ago in, in 1960, whew, 65 or 66, we, we hired James Earl Jones to do the commercials for Night of the Iguana, which I think could have been the first time a man of color was invited to do any commercials. Um, and he was doing The Great White Hope at the time on Broadway, and we hired him. Um, I like his work. I like uh, Gene Hackman's work. I think that uh, Hector Elizondo is one of the great voices of all time. Yeah, I like a lot of these people that are doing these things. Things like MTV and, and music videos and even the way films themselves are being cut nowadays have been influenced very heavily by the trailer industry. So I was very lucky to be in that position, and I was very lucky to be in a position of, of working all the way across the board. I was writing material that I was reading, and I was, I was not limited to any particular style, so I could do romance, I could do horror, I could do action, I could do comedy, I could do musicals, I could do all these things that, um, that very few other people have had the opportunity or, or are called upon to do it. So 
um, uh, just the, the sheer longevity and the fact that I've had that opportunity has, has uh, been largely responsible for whatever success I've enjoyed. Uh, professionally, no, I wouldn't change an instant. Red Carpet Talk, coming each week to a computer near you. This is Don LaFontaine. Thanks for listening to my interview on Red Carpet Talk. In a world, the entertainment world, one star shines brighter than the rest. Red Carpet Talk. We bring the red carpet to you.